Wonder how to use the mitered border feature in Borders and Corners? I'm going to show you how. As you know, Borders and Corners is a feature of the gold subscription in Quilter's Creative Touch. When you go to your splash screen, you're going to go to your gold features and then click on Borders and Corners. You are now taken into Borders and Corners and you'll notice that I already have a border that's loaded and it is the corner style. You can see it's checked down here. But we're going to switch that to the mitered border. So just click on the box here and notice our border has changed and we have the mitered corners. So the trick to using the mitered border is to choose the right type of pattern. And I found that if I use a triangular pattern that I join together like a border, it will fit perfectly into these angled borders. So we're going to follow the steps along the left side of the screen. The first one is to select your border style and placement and we have chosen miter. And the next part is to set your margins. That is to say how far from the edge of the quilt do you want your border pattern to begin and how far inward from your internal quilt pattern do you want your border to end. There is a lock which allows you to select the same size for both the outer and the inside. Margin, I'm going to uncheck that because I want to choose something different for the outer border and I'll click right here in where it says zero and then I can choose what measurement I want. I'm going to select a half an inch and I'm going to say OK. And notice it has created a half inch margin away from the edge of the quilt. I like to use a half an inch because as I stitch down my binding, I'm stitching inward a quarter of an inch. And then I'd like to give myself just a quarter of an inch more wiggle space. So then when I'm selecting my inner margin, I could use the plus or the minus, but I'm going to click on where it says zero and then choose a quarter of an inch. I'll say OK and notice the gray line is marked here and it's a quarter of an inch inward from the inside of the border. So I like that and number three says to get your pattern. I'll click on that and since this is a gold card feature I'm going to use a pattern from the gold card. So I'm going to select my border And notice I'm in my gold patterns. And the nice thing about buying the gold subscription, no matter when you buy it, you get all of the patterns back from when the gold subscription was first created. That's back in September of 2018. So you will get all of those patterns right up to the current date. I have chosen a pattern in the February of 2019 collection, and it's called a door. And notice it is a triangular pattern. So I've opened it and it has auto filled because I have auto fill selected here and it tells me that six border patterns were chosen that will fit right in that area. I'm liking the way that looks and notice my pattern is ending right here where my angled mitered border is and it's starting right here on the line where my angled border is again. So what you need to do, I'm in simulation mode and so the placing of my pattern has to do with where I'm clicking on my screen. When you're at your machine, wherever you move your sewing machine head to and place your needle, that is how you're placing your pattern. You just want to check to be sure that you've aligned your pattern up with your mitered border and then you're going to stitch that out. And prior to stitching, you might want to save it just to be sure. So now what I need to do is to go back and to place the triangular pattern, but flip it. And so these parts that are sticking up here will be downward in between the border that I've just stitched out. 
and that's how you place the border in a mitered border. So now what I need to do, I'm going to go to flip my pattern because I want to do the part that's going to go up here. So rather than it stitching that way, I'm going to go to number four, which is flip pattern. I'm going to flip it on the vertical, check the box, and my pattern is flipped. So the nice thing about this is in order for your angled border to stitch out correctly, you have to be sure that your stitching line for your pattern is going to intersect with that angled border. So it doesn't seem to be a problem on the right, uh, but on the left, notice that my stitched out design doesn't quite meet the angled border. And I'm going to use the magnification bar up here just to be sure how much I need to move it over. When you're in simulation mode, you just need to hold your left mouse button down or your finger on your screen and drag your design over to where you can see where it comes close to or intersects your angled border. So I have a bit of space here and the reason I want my pattern to line up is because when I go to set my um, side border, it needs to be in the right space in order to connect to that border and look like it's one continuous line that goes across the top and then down the side. So what I'm going to do, I need to go back to set margins and then I need to click right in this corner because that is where I want my pattern to move over to. And now I'm going to go down here where it says custom border and I want to custom place my left edge. I'll click there. Notice it gives me a green line because that's where my stitching is going to begin over on this green line and it has moved my pattern right on the edge of that mitered border and that's correct. And so when my pattern when I'm placing my pattern and stitching for the side border, it will interact in just the right way and will make this whole entire border look like it's a continuous line. So just to be sure, I'm going to move over to the right side and see if I have to make any corrections there. Nope, looks like it's perfect. It lines right up with that angled border. But if it weren't, I would use my left mouse button or use my finger to place my positioning node. Then I would go down to my right edge, click there, and then it produces a red line and make sure that my pattern intersects in the right area. So when I'm done doing that, I can go up here to my magnifier and say fit. Then you will be able to see your entire pattern and notice you have a green line here. Green means go. Your pattern will start stitching here. Red means no. Your pattern will end over here. And now all you need to do is stitch this pattern right above the pattern that you just stitched when you place the bottom part of your border. And that's how you get a pattern to fit within your angled borders. If you had made a mistake in placing your left or right border, just click on clear and you get the opportunity to replace it. I hope that helps. If you found this content helpful, click on the Quilted Poodle Facebook page to see the current registration for the QCT online Zoom meetings, which meet the second Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The cost is $15 for about three hours of tips, tricks, and demos. If you're not available on the second Tuesday, the meetings are always recorded and made available to paid participants. The agenda is developed around questions posed by participants. Please like and subscribe so you will always be notified of new content that I post. Thanks for watching. God bless.